Hello everyone, and welcome to this Arcaman tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to install Joomla manually on a web host. I'll be using Joomla 1.7 for this tutorial. You can use this tutorial to install older versions of Joomla and newer versions. But I do recommend using the newest version possible. This helps to keep your website more secure. There's a few reasons you might want to install Joomla manually. Your web host might not support easy installs, or you want to keep your website even more secure. Installing manually can make your website more secure, so it's a good idea. The first thing you need to do when installing Joomla on your web host is get the actual files on the web host so you can install. So you'll need to go to the Joomla 1.7 website, which is at joomla.org, and download the Joomla full package. There's a few different ways we can upload the Joomla files to the website. We can download the full package and extract it and upload all the files from the package up to the web host already extracted. Or we can use a cPanel manager or another manager that is provided by the web host to extract it and upload it from a web site like this. I'm using cPanel so I have the cPanel file manager. There's one other way. You can use SSH to upload it and extract it. Using the file manager is probably the easier way to do it but using the SSH connection is faster, cleaner, and if you get used to it, you can use it all the time. First, I'm going to show you how to do it with the file manager. Click Upload, choose the file, select the file, and upload it. Once the file is uploaded, you can select it and select Extract. Then you can say Extract. All your files will be extracted to a directory. That's how you do it with the file manager. Another way to do it, as I mentioned before, is with an SSH connection. Shell access, as it were. Now, with shell access, you can simply download the file directly from the Joomla website. So go to the Joomla 1.70 full package, right click on the zip, and copy the link address. Go into your PuTTY connection and type down SSH, excuse me, type down wget space and then right click. This will paste your link. Go ahead and press enter and the full Joomla package will be downloaded to your web host. Now we have the actual zip file and you can check by simply typing dir which is dir for directory and you can see that we do have the Joomla package right here but it's still in a zip file so we need to extract it. So let's go ahead and select the name of this package. Control C to copy it. And, and then you can right click to bring it up. What you can do is go unzip which is the command to unzip something that is on the FTP. Right click and paste in the link. It will then unzip all of the files it'll take a few moments for it to unzip fully. Once it's done, you can go ahead and now open up the installation directory on your web browser. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the Joomla web installer. This is the process that you're going to follow to get your website up and running on your website, on your web host. So I'm going to select the English language and I can see all of the information that the Joomla website has figured out about our website, our web host. And everything is okay, so let's go next. We have to accept the uh, accept the EULA. 
And now we go ahead and we set up our MySQL server. Now even though Joomla says that it's most likely that it's going to be MySQLi, most likely it's going to be MySQL and not that. I don't know why they think it's going to most likely be MySQLi, because actually more people use MySQL. Okay, at this point in the tutorial, it's going to go off a little bit and it's going to go into the cPanel setup. Now, if you don't have cPanel and you have something else, then you'll just have to look at the information about your web host on their help site. But if you have cPanel, then you can simply follow along. Go ahead and go to the MySQL databases. And now what you want to do is go ahead and create a database. So I'm going to create a database test. Create database. It says you have added the database argument C underscore test. I'm going to paste this in my information. Let's go back. And now we need to create a user. So let's go ahead and just put in test. And now we need to generate a password. So we'll just copy this password and select that and go ahead and paste that. All right, now let's create the user. As you can see, the user has been ended with the password. Now we have to add the user to the database. So let's go ahead and select test as our user and database test add. You can see now that we have added him to the database. It needs to load up the permissions menu here, and I'll show you what to do when that loads up. Go ahead and select all privileges and make changes. It will now confirm that those changes were made and the user has been fully and successfully added to the database. So you can see that we have our database here and the user. All right, now that we have that information set up, we can go ahead and input our new information. I'm going to select the user and the database name. Then I'm going to select the password and put it in the password section. As you can see, the prefix table has been randomized to make it more secure. With most simple installs, this doesn't happen. That's why it's a good idea to use a manual install. So now, go ahead and remove any of the old tables that are included in your database, although it should be empty. All right, now we get to the FTP login. Most people can just skip this step, and that's what we're going to do. All right, now we set up some information about our website, such as site name, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to go ahead and type down site, or test site, and then it wants you to input your email. And then you have your admin username and your admin password. Then you can install the simple data if you wish. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and install so we have some of this show for our effort. Go ahead and click Next. And it will say, please remember to completely remove the installation directory. Go ahead and just remove the installation directory with that button. And now we can log in. Let's go ahead and take a look at our site and our administer login. Here's our new successfully installed Joomla 1.7 install. And here's our backend. 
I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, subscribe, rate, and all that good stuff. I'm going to be making more Joomla tutorials soon. So thanks for watching.